What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're enjoying this content, please go ahead, do me a favor, and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. All right, so in today's video, I wanted to take a moment to talk about macro controls. So if ever you've seen this little icon on the bottom of your channels in your console, if you click it, you'll notice that you have this little fader, and then you have all these knobs and these buttons. Now, full disclosure, this is something that I never really used to use, but when I got the fader port, I noticed that there was a macro button, and it's really cool because the macro button, when you click that, you have access to all of these knobs uh, across your faders, and in addition to that, you have access to the buttons as well. So I ended up kind of trying to incorporate it into my workflow, and it's actually something that I'm using now, so I thought I would do a quick video on this. All right, so to start off with, we will click the channel editor icon over here and we're going to open up the macro controls. Now I'm going to talk about a couple different use cases. One of them is a really practical kind of utility use where it allows us to bypass one plugin while we're unbypassing another at the same time. So this is really good for a bean. And then another one is just in a basic context scenario of being able to map out certain controls that you would use on a plugin into one set of useful macro controls. Okay, so to start off with, let's open up the Pro EQ over here and let's activate this. So let's say we're listening to acoustic guitar. I'm gonna solo this out and we have two different EQs. I've got a Pro EQ and I've also gone to a fat channel and I'm using the passive EQ model. And let's say I want it to A, B between the two of these. So it's really, really hard to do this in real time. I would have to deactivate this one and then activate this one and then switch over here and I can have access to the parameters. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's activate both of these and I'm gonna to go to the Pro EQ, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to connect this to button one. So now what this means is that this bypass is connected to the Pro EQ on button one. Now I'm gonna switch over to my fat channel and I could either connect the bypass or I could connect the EQ on state. In this case, I'm going to connect the bypass and I'm gonna connect it to the same button. So now you'll notice that as I click this button that both of these EQs, or these plugins rather, are bypassing. Now, one thing that we can do is if I enter the setup or the controls mapping, we also have another option that allows us to, for example, if we select this button, if we click one of these options over here, it inverts this particular button. So what this means now is that as I bypass one, it unbypasses the other. So this allows us to have a really, really smooth AB if we wanted to listen to which one we like better. So for example, let's bypass this. We're listening to the Pro EQ. So maybe I'm gonna bring my bass in so I can make a better decision. Okay, I think I like the Pro EQ better. Full disclosure, it's probably because it's a little brighter. So maybe we'll just pull this down a little bit. So that's one use in terms of being able to A, B between two different plugins. Just map out the bypass to them, want to, to both of them to the same button. And then we just have to enter the mapping setup and we have the option to select the button one and we can invert either one of these so that while we're bypassing one, we're unbypassing the other. So that's one use that I like to set up for this. Now let's take a look at another use. Here is my mix bus. On my mix bus, I'm using a compressor, which is the SSL emulation, the Brit Comp, and then I'm also using a Baxendahl EQ. So what we can do in this scenario is anything that's useful to me. So for example, in this case, I can map out the button, this particular power button over here, if I wanted to activate or deactivate the compressor on here. Actually, let me turn the power on for both of these so they work right now. I can map this out to comp on. And now I don't have to have this plugin GUI open. I can access this directly and I can bring my compressor in and out as needed. In addition to that, I've also mapped out my EQ so I can turn the EQ module on or off as needed as well. So the other thing I've done here, let's switch over to the EQ, is you can see that my low shelf frequency, I've mapped this out to knob three. 
so I don't have to actually open up this plugin. And like I said, the whole purpose of this for me is because I wanna do this using the fader port. And I don't have to look at a plugin GUI, I can just use my ears, I can scroll between these different frequencies. And then I've got my low gain mapped out, and let's really quickly map out the high gain, the high frequency and the high gain. So for this one, I wanna use knob five. I'm going to right click, and I'm gonna connect this to knob five. Now I have my actual gain. And then I have my frequency. I could have done this in the opposite order. Really depends on how you want to look at it. Actually, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we will we will map out um, the frequency first. So we'll map this out to knob five. And then we will map out the gain. We will map that out to knob six. So now we have the frequency and we have the actual gain. So these are not all the parameters. I don't have the low cuts mapped, but I have the four parameters that I would use the most. And then in addition to that, I also have the EQ on or off. So now as I'm listening, I could make adjustments to this in context and I don't even need to have this plugin open. So for example, I could just close this. Tons of compression happening there. Just dial this back. I can use a gain reduction meter here. I can also adjust my makeup gain, bypass my compressor, I can turn my EQ off, bring it in, choose a frequency, There, everything is bypassed. So this is a useful feature, especially if you're using either a fader port eight or a fader port 16. We have a dedicated button on the fader ports for macros, and it's really handy to get to. And if you find yourself tweaking certain parameters, so maybe it's the top end of an EQ and it's affecting your mix bus or something like that, I find that it's really nice to not even have to open up the plugin GUI. I can just hit that macro control and I'm also able to see the name of what's mapped out and I can just use these buttons. Now, technically speaking, this is something that you could use just by using a mouse. And if you wanted to just adjust this while you're just, you know, using a mouse or a trackpad or something like that. But for me, it really comes into its own when I'm using the fader port because it gives me that hands-on control. And like I said, the other thing we can do is any one of these parameters, I can really go into the mapping and change things. So for example, if I wanted to set a maximum range of something, I could make some adjustments here. So maybe I say, I don't want any cut, I just want this to be boost. So now this particular knob will only function according to that and we can make adjustments to these. So this is a little bit more deeper in terms of getting under the hood of all of this. And the other thing we can do is we can even adjust the curve in terms of how these changes happen. This is pretty self-explanatory, uh, but it's definitely worth exploring, especially if you're using a controller. Anyway, so that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you got something from this video. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I will do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.